celebrity style inspiration. Hi CSIers, this is the Manila Times CSI, celebrity style inspiration. Our entertainment and lifestyle pages come to life across the Manila Times digital platforms. Ako po si Tessa Mauricio Ariola, and we're so happy to be back to begin our third season. As the world moves on and the new normal slowly settles in, we're excited as ever to bring you your favorite celebrities and personalities in this final quarter of 2020. This is the Manila Times CSI, and let's get started right now. CSI, Celebrity Style Inspiration. First off, let's take a look at this week's winners and downers. Last Sunday saw the premiere of Sunday Noontime Live or SNL on TV5. The star-studded variety show is made up of both Kapamilya and freelance artists headed by longtime ABS-CBN leading man Viola Pascual, Catriona Gray, Maha Salvador, Donny Pangilinan, and Jake Ejercito. Those who saw the prem will agree with me that they pulled out all the stops in producing what is now a brand new option for everyone to see on Sunday noon times, challenging Sunday Pinasaya and ASAP where Piola and Maha came from. It's no surprise that SNL is as good as it was on day one, what with the iconic Mr. M or Johnny Manahan, founder of Star Magic, who stepped down as chairman to direct this show. Kudos to Piolo and the gang, Mr. M, and former Congressman Albi Benitez, whose Bright Light Productions is behind this new awesome program that's definitely a winner in our books. Here's a downer though, as two candidates from the very first edition of Miss Universe Philippines had to withdraw from the pageant. First was Maria Isabella Galeria of Sorsogon, who was still recovering from COVID-19, saying that while she's determined to compete on the big night, her body just isn't cooperating. The other candidate to withdraw was Vinci Bacalares of Cagayan de Oro, who was likewise infected by COVID-19 and has since been confined at St. Luke's Hospital. The sad development took place over the week just as 51 candidates of Miss You Philippines started preparing and recording parts of Coronation Night in Baguio following strict safety protocols. Ang finals night ay mapapalabas sa GMA on October 25. Get well soon, girls, and we all hope you'll heal your way back to the crown. After that, let's end this segment with a winner as top K-pop girl group Blackpink premiered their Netflix documentary, Blackpink, Light of the Sky, last Wednesday. The documentary follows Jisoo, Jenny, Rosé, and Lisa's journey to superstardom with never-before-seen moments. Since it's prime, the film is still a hot and trending topic on social media and, as expected, is number one in Netflix Philippines' top 10 movies. And that's it for this week's winners and downers. We'll be right back with our certified CSI report. Now let's move on to our certified CSI report. For our first report of season three, let us welcome Christina Alpad. Hi, Tina Pai. Hi, Misty, and hi, CSIers. It's great to have you back, and I'm sure you've also got something great for us in your report today. Yes, Misty, indeed. This week, I have a timely certified quarantine report. Let's hear it. As we slowly go into the new normal, Alden Richards and his latest leading lady on GMA, Jasmine Curtis-Smith, has got tips para sa mga nakabuo ng quarant fling. But the bigger question is, nagkaroon ba ng ka-quarant fling ang single kitty actor na si Alden? Let's ask him if he did. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Sir Alden po ba nagkaroon or nagka like a close experience with parenting. Parang masyado akong na-focus into my gaming. Oh, so, right. oh, I agree. 
So, parang wala naman. So, in the past six months, wala naman nangyaring ganun. So, yun po. Yung story po ng inyong episode ay tungkol sa romance na nag- uh, nagsimula sa quarantine. Um, if familiar with the term quarant fling, <laughs> gusto ko naman tanong, tingin niyo po ba um, there's um, a chance for romances like this to thrive even after the lockdowns? And ano yung pwede kayang uh dito parang gawin ng mga um, couples na dito nagsimula to continue their relationships grabe nga yun sige i'll start yeah siguro um siguro regard kagaya po nung sinabi ko kanina the, the story will parang uh, tell the audience na kahit ano pang mangyari sa buhay natin regardless of where we are and what we do there's always love uh, right around the corner uh, kasi right after naman this uh, and then even dun pagbalik natin sa mas madali siyang amount uh, hindi na kailangan makita kita in person and we'll still get the same results etc. But really um, consistency is the key. Kung gaano kayo ka-consistent nung when uh, during the quarantine, the quarantine uh, period, unable to sustain the relationship. You have to be consistent also, right? After. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Because essentially, para kayo na ka long distance, eh. and you know, ganon lang din naman yon kapag uh, na ka long distance kayo, pag di kayo magkasama physically, di ba? Kailangan mapakita mo na you're there, you're somehow still just there for the person, no matter where you are, no matter what time it is. Uh, so, ang magiging ano lang naman yan, it, it will be a challenge, I'm sure, and I'm sure for some people, mawirdohan sila to see the whoever they're flirting with or having a fling with for the first time. But, kung gusto naman talaga, may paraan eh, diba? Magagawa niya ng paraan. You'll be able to make it feel normal, make it feel like it's supposed to be, you are where you're supposed to be. Thank you so much! Our Manila Times pop culture columnist and reviewer Karen Kunawix is, of course, back on our third season for Watchlist. Here's what she's got just for you. Hello, everybody. It's October 22, 2020. It's a Thursday. And welcome to the first episode of the third season of CSI. I'm Karen, and I've got this week's Watchlist recommendation. And I've never been more excited to talk about a film for CSI for Watchlist than I am today. Yes, I am talking about the film Yang Gao, which translated to English means um, affliction or infection. And it's really great for this time of year. I wouldn't say that's because it's uh, gory, scary, or nightmarish. I think the better word for this Richard Somes film is haunting. Uh, it starts out with this young woman named Amor and uh, she's feeling quite sick. Her friend rushes a healer uh, to some kind of tent to see her and the healer takes a look at her and uh, she's, this is a mystery illness. I think it is beyond my power to cure her. Um, you just have to bring her home. And a uh, home for Amor is a barrio in uh, the province of Negros. And she lives with her father, mother, uh, brother, sister-in-law, and nephew. Ronnie Lazaro plays her father, Junior Villasin, and uh, this is an affectionate father, but at the same time, he also knows he has to be a leader, a protector, and a provider. But what happens to all these roles when the daughter you love, uh, the child you love, is slowly being turned into a monster who is a threat not just to the community, but to your family? Joining the legendary Ronnie Lazaro is another legendary Ilongo talent, Joel Torre. And you've also got direct Eric Mati uh, acting in this film. 
there's Gio Respal, uh, Techiag Bayani, and uh, As Amor, a young lady named Alira Montalia. You can watch Yang Gao on YouTube anytime you want, anywhere you want, for free. So I suggest you uh, watch it. months run like any other we've experienced in our lives. Beyond our homes, industries have been terribly affected with travel and tourism on top of the list hit hardest. Pre-pandemic, travel had become part of people's lifestyles more than ever, powerfully spawning a new breed of video bloggers whose content became go-to sources for everyone else to prep for theirs. But as borders shut down all over the world, only to open up with varied quarantine rules, we're all left wondering, and more so, the most active and followed travel bloggers pre-pandemic, where do we go from here? Today on The T-Zone, we're excited to have with us a fabulous foursome who continue to be social media's favorite travel vloggers despite the pandemic. We had featured them very recently on the Sunday Times Magazine cover, and we thought it best to check up on them as they continue to live by choice, albeit grounded in the Philippines. Please welcome British couple George and Lucy of the Juicy Vlog and Austrians Mike and Nelly of Making It Happen on today's T-Zone for CSI. Hi guys! Hi! Hi! Hi, Hi. Hi. we're all, all in each other's homes right now, but um, you know, we're very happy to finally meet you uh, in as much as personal can be <laughs> in this at this time. Um, how are all of you doing? And um, we'll start with uh, the Juicy Vlog couple. How are you? We're good, we're good thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, doing well. We're doing okay, yeah. we're good. We're busy making videos yeah. and yeah, we're good. And how about Mike and Nelly? How are you? Very well, thank yeah. you. I'm, I'm recovering from a little bit of surgery I had uh, last week, but yeah. otherwise everything is good. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, um, we, we received so much positive feedback from when we had um, the four of you on the cover of the Sunday Times magazine. So, you know, even our bosses over at the office and a lot of, you know, the readers of the Manila Times were hoping that they could actually not just read about you, but but see you on our online show. So that's why we've, we've invited you here and we're so happy that uh, your schedules opened up. But um, just for my first question, you know, obviously um, you guys are the, you know, you could say the epitome of wanderlusters, if I can make, you know, use that term that way. But, you know, all four of you now are literally stuck where you are in the Philippines today. Um, we have cabin fever, we have quarantine fatigue, but what about you popular travel vloggers? How are you dealing with this whole situation? If we could probably start with um, Mike and Nelly, please. Yeah. So I have to say at the beginning, it was, uh, it was very tough just from a mindset point of view, because as yeah. you said, we are travelers. We love to explore new places and we love to show the places that we visit to our audience through our eyes, through our cameras. But what we realized over the past few months is that there's so much to show alone in the city that we live in, the city of Manila, Makati. There's so many things that you can explore, show people, there's always something new happening. So it's been a, a big learning curve for us, definitely. Yeah. But I think we, we still have retained the same passion for making videos as, as we had before. Yeah. So, is it much more difficult doing videos with PPEs on, I'm sure? I mean, with like, <laughs> face shields and masks, yes. so, right? <laughs> 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 well, what about our couple from the Juicy Vlog? I mean, how have you ha handled uh, the sudden change of lifestyle for all of us? Uh, yeah, I think we never expected it to last this long, so far. Um, but I think that in terms of the content and the video, we knew travel would be off for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And I think we kind of dialed it right back down to basics, how we kind of started our YouTube channel, just documenting our lives, documenting what we were up to. And I think it, it turned into relatable content. We were stuck at home, everyone else was stuck at home who was watching. And it was kind of a feeling of we're all in it together. Yes. Um if I could go to my 
to uh, something that I kind of told you I'd ask you um, earlier when we were just chatting before we started taping. Um, I was just wondering, obviously, I'm sure you've spoken to family members and, and, and friends from, you know, abroad, from, from, from England and, and from Austria. Uh, and I'm sure they've shared with you how being quarantined in uh, your countries are like. Um, but being quarantined, and having heard that and being quarantined here in the Philippines, um, are you happy to have been quarantined here or do you think uh, you regret anything and it might have been easier being locked down um, back back home, in your first homes? Um, Mike and Nelly. Yeah, I think that's a very tough question to say so. Um, I think we had over 200 days quarantine here in the Philippines. but. All of our families and friends are very happy that we are safe and they see us wearing face masks, they see us taking precautions um, and I think for us, Filipinos became role models in like the way how they behave in, in, in a situation like that and it turned into a thing where we actually tell our families, oh, you should actually, you know, wear the face mask, you should actually put on a facial, you should wash your hands, you should sanitize, you know, we kind of try to give our know-how that we learned here back to our families and friends. Um, and so far, I don't think we had like, like a bad experience yeah. or anything. And before we actually moved to the Philippines, before we made the Philippines our home, we lived in Miami and Florida. And Nelly and my parents, we all said, thank God that we live in the Philippines yeah. now, that we're not, you know, over there where it's really, really tough at the moment. And where people kind of refuse to, you know, <laughs> um, Yeah, I know. Um, how about you, um, um, George and Lucy? Did you, do you have any regrets being caught? by the pandemic here in the Philippines or are you happy that you were locked down here yeah, with us? No regret for us. I think we, we absolutely love being here. We're very grateful to have had our apartment here and spend the lockdown here, even though it's inside these four walls. The videos may have got a bit repetitive, but I think like George said, everyone was in it together and just how uh, everyone listening to the rules it means and we're very safe to go outside and see everyone in masks, people in shops with their shields on and things. And it's just reassuring. It's good to know that things are being taken seriously yeah. and it makes them more safe. They're doing it a little bit different in England. Yeah. There's um, some rules, some are a little less strict and things like that. But if we watch any vlogs from some people we watch in the UK, where it kind of shocks us now to yeah. see how some people are going around and, you know, with a little bit less care maybe. Um, I think here they've done a great job at, you know, providing the, the necessary the education in a way I suppose it just it just seems normal now to wear a mask um, and a shield you know I think it, everyone's kind of playing by the rules from what we see and I don't know we, it makes us feel a little bit safer but um, nowadays when you are uh, you know sort of um, choose which parts of your life you want to share I mean how do you do that because obviously it's just basically living in Manila and maybe quite a lot of it has to be taken from 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 inside your apartments or flats and um, how do you choose which ones to share with with your followers Mike and Ellie let's start with you yeah, yeah. so I, I think um, for us when we were on the road traveling all the time it was kind of always clear what kind of content that we're going to put out when we traveled to Chagao the uh, the videos were about Chagao but now I feel like a whole new world has opened up to us content wise because we were just living our lives day for day and so many times I think oh I want to share this with my audience and you really have to pick like one topic from what's going on in your life and that day and you say like this is what I want to share with everybody so at the same time we're being limited we're not able to travel but on the other hand I feel like there's so much more to talk about there's so many more stories to tell yeah and I think we found a new appreciation for the term home same mm -hmm. as you see where we say like Oh, we only have like three or four days in between trips um, as like this being our home base um, and I don't know I just love like the whole new perspective that I gained during the pandemic um, and also like the small little like mini adventures that we have during the day I don't know sometimes it's just going grocery shopping but so many people can relate to that and it's just nice it's just nice to share it and, and see that people appreciate simple content like that as well how about you, um, George and um, Lucy? How, how, you know, how do you choose what you share with us? 
I think generally most things get shared uh, because I think the four of us are daily vlogging at the moment pretty much and I think it's most of our days we share with our audience and it's become a very personal thing. They know what we're up to in our days, they comment in our videos and we have like a real conversation so it feels very, very personal with our audiences. Uh, but similar to with what Nelly was saying, how you appreciate the smaller things now since the pandemic. For example, there's a new little seating area that's been put up on BGC High Street. And before the pandemic, you might walk past it and think, oh yeah, that's nice. Might might make a vlog, might might not. But now it's like, wow, that's so exciting. It's something new. You can go and sit there and eat a meal there. Uh, and we made the whole video the yeah. other day was pretty much about this one place. And you can see in the video how excited we are to table and chairs. It's kind of crazy, but it's, it's a new perspective, you, definitely. You, you appreciate the smaller things. Yeah. And as for choosing what to share and what not to share, I think we've, we've been vlogging for so long, uh, it kind of just happens naturally. Yeah. It happens in a way that we, we kind of know. We, I kind of edit in my head as I go along. We know the videos are a certain length, usually, give or take, a few minutes. Um, and I kind of, you, you kind of just get to have the story of your day rolling in your head when you're filming and what you want to do, what you don't want to do. It comes very, very naturally. Nowadays, I mean, in the past, like, if somebody asked, a, you know, a little kid, uh, what would you like to be? They'd probably say, oh, a doctor or a pilot or whatever. And nowadays, I hear my son saying, I go, what do you want to be when you grow up? I say, I want to be a vlogger. <laughs> and then you know, uh, people who really don't know how the the bis you know how this whole business goes and how this creative process um, happens, they kind of you know older people kind of sort of frown at that. Uh, but uh, what do you think they should know about? Um, we'll call it a profession. I mean, the profession or the passion for vlogging. And uh, what what do you think they should know so that when their children tell them that they want to be vloggers themselves, they're not going to panic. Let's start with um, uh, George and Lucy, please. I, I say it's it's just an, a new-ish form of media. It's a new-ish form of content for people to consume where, where actually the person is way more in control of what they want to watch. If you're into cars, you can watch car vloggers. If you're into playing golf, there's videos on YouTube about playing golf. There's food, travel, you know, everything, day-to-day -day life, people doing laundry, probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to watch on YouTube, you can go and find it for yourself. You can choose when you watch it, you can choose how long you watch. Um, yeah. We personally love the platform, obviously. Um, compared to like traditional TV and things where there's a set schedule of programming and you have to sit down at a certain time to watch it, it's, it's just um, way more flexible for the viewer. And then on, on kids wanting to be vloggers, I'd say, you know why? Why not? That's that's a great ambition to have. Yeah, to I be. Think it's amazing that you can make something of it as well. Make some. Passion. Make something for yourself. Yeah. You know everything we do. Um, we do you know for ourselves, and everything that's happened to us has been from you know us putting in the work. So if someone can yeah. do that for themselves, that's incredible. I think, and it's yeah, it's definitely a. I think it's the most yeah. um, desired career choice Crazy. now in, amongst young people. Yeah. Um, and I think if someone wants to go into it, then like a kid that's excited about the idea of possibly being a vlogger, as long as they are genuinely loving what they're filming, loving what they're editing, loving the whole process, and not just the idea of being a vlogger, then I think it would be an awesome career for them or, or a passion for them. Uh, but it's definitely having the, the love for creating videos, the love for having an audience, the community around you, and just overall, yeah, just love, yeah, loving yeah, what you do. You have to love the process. We, we, we've just kind of been on the cusp of you know, vloggers and YouTubers in the past never knew it would kind of become a job or become something bigger. And we we were kind of in the middle of that where we saw these bigger creators, but for us at the start, it certainly wasn't that. So, it, um, you know, some things have been surprising for us. So I would say, yeah, as long as people are doing it for the right reasons and they enjoy making videos. I always say to people, they, people ask us, how do I start? What, how do I be a YouTuber? And they haven't yet made any videos. I'd always say, make 100 videos. If you still wow. love it, 100 videos, carry on. Then you're good to go. <laughs> if you hate it, stop, do something yeah. else. And it's gotta be real, right? I mean, it's yeah. not like, it, it can't be, people know when it's a put on or it's like, whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's something you're doing like on a daily or a weekly basis. You need to genuinely love doing it and get excited for picking the camera up and not kind of dread it and think, oh, I've got to film another video today. You've got, I mean, you have ups and downs with anything, but you've got to genuinely love what you do, I think. How about you, um, Mike and Nelly? What would you uh, tell uh, maybe our, our older audiences? I mean, if they're children or like uh, the, you know younger people in their family, tell them we want to go into vlogging. How would you assure them that this is actually a really worthwhile 
uh, profession and passion. Yeah, I think uh, everything that George and Lucy said is very valid. I, I put myself in the situation where I have a kid and he says he wants to become a blogger. I'd definitely be very encouraging about it. Um, being a blogger takes a lot of dedication um, to keep it up. But at the same time, um, being a blogger, and it always depends on what topic you're talking about, being a blogger about a certain topic gives you so much more insight and depth knowledge about the topic itself. Just like we learn so much about food and travel and so on. So if you have somebody out there that wants to become a blogger and talk about mechanics, cars, it's definitely a good position to be in because you will learn so much about that topic itself. So maybe you can find something that your kids uh, a profession that your kids maybe do see a future in besides blogging and tell them to blog about that, blog about the process of wanting to become a pilot or a painter or a mechanic or a dancer or whatever. Because being a blogger about that will give you so much more insight about that topic. So, And I definitely agree with George as well that it should be your passion. You should not do it because you see, you know, all the results. Like, uh, I always say the first three years we did YouTube, we, we earned nothing. It was just trusting the process that someday maybe it will be uh, it will become something better. But for us, it's more valuable to have these memories captured. Um, we did the same thing like George and Lucy. We are in quarantine. We keep looking back at our adventures and at our life how it was before pandemic. And it's just nice to have that. Like, summarized on, on a like in one spot for us and it's the photo mm -hmm. album of today right the, yes. the, and, the, and, the, and our nobody prints pictures anymore so it's, it's your photo album of your life right yeah and the community that we gained throughout that process is just a bonus for us so it's it's it should be in first place something that makes you happy um because as much as as it looks like it's it's easy it's sometimes not that easy. Um, you know, you have to deal with a lot of um, new things. It's very challenging with the YouTube algorithm. You have the little trolls. You have uh, also to um, face hate sometimes. So you have to. And you have to charge so many batteries. <laughs> yeah. You have to charge so many batteries. Yeah. <laughs> there was so much time in creating the content. Um, of course, our community sees the result, but it's like the whole process behind the scenes is like a 24-7 thing. So um, it takes a lot of time and dedication. So you definitely have to love it. But it's amazing, isn't it, life? I mean, how it's led you to this and actually getting to do what it is that you want to do and um, taking you all over the world. And we're very, very uh, flattered that you actually chose the Philippines to be your number two home base. Uh, and um, we, we really, really hope that in time, I mean, we're loving the, you know, the, the vlogs from around where you live in daily life, but uh, hopefully you'll get to show us more of the Philippines and more of the rest of the world when this is all over. So we thank you very much, guys, and uh, we wish you all the best. And I hope you stay in touch with the Manila Times. If we could, you know, feature any of your uh, upcoming singles, we'll be there for you. <laughs> maybe a movie here and there, or maybe a, you know, like a drama series. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe just a final message for um, the Manila Times CSI uh, viewers. So let's start with uh, the Juicy Vlogs, George and Lucy. Thanks so much for watching this interview. Thanks to the Manila Times for having us today. Uh, we had a great time. And check us out on YouTube. We will see you over there. Thank you. Mike and Nelly. Uh, thanks for tuning in guys. If you want to see some travel vibes, some food videos, and just us exploring this beautiful country, head on over to Making It Happen Vlog and we'll see you over there. <laughs> Thank you so much. How about Nelly? Did you want to say something also? Yeah, I just, wanted to say, I just wanted to say keep on smiling. Oh, and thank you so much important. for everybody who supports us and gives us so much love and kindness. We feel very welcome here um, and we are just uh, the happiest in our life. Yeah. Thank you for falling in love with us. Thank you for falling in love with the Philippines and staying in love in the Philippines. Uh, we wish you all the best and hopefully we can do another feature on you guys um, um, come next year when everything hopefully settles down. So once again, thank you very much. George and Lucy of the Juicy Vlog and Mike and Nelly of Making It Happen.
That's it for the Tea Zone. Thank you very much to George and Lucy of the Juicy Vlog and Mike and Nelly of Making It Happen for today. Do continue to follow their vlogs and please stand by for CSI Exchange with the girls. And now we're back on my favorite part of the program, CSI Exchange. Let's get the girls back into season three. Christina, Nika, and Isa, hello there, ladies. Hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hi. Hi. Welcome to our third season. And I'm so happy to see you all uh, well, well rested and raring to, uh, raring to go. Tama ba? Um, bago kayo mag-hello at mga musta sa ating mga CSIRs, ang question natin for today para mapag-isipan nyo na ay ito. Let me pull it up. What can you say about the Kapamilya and freelance artists moving on to TV5 or GMA? Sa tingin nyo ba ito na ang end ng network war? Let's start with you, Isa Pai. Ako po, I'm very, very happy na uh, makikita din natin sa ibang channels yung mga uh, ibang kapamilya artists kasi to be honest talaga na hindi lahat naman ng artista sa ABS-CBN ay magkakaroon ng work dahil nga nabawasan din naman yung kanilang mga shows and yung mga projects. So, hindi lahat mabibigyan ng equal opportunity na magkaroon ng kanilang project. So, it's a good ano din po, um, um, feeling or it's a good thing din na mapanood sila sa ibang networks po. And I think ngayon po, nag-uumpisa na rin na mawala yung network wars kasi nga, um, mas nakasanayan natin before yung ano eh, kung sinong artista ditong channel lang siya. Ngayon, kahit sa ang channel, pwede mo na silang mapanood. And syempre walang masakit na feelings po para sa kanilang nakasama ding artista sa previous networks nila. Agree ako, Isa Pai. Agree ka ba, Tina Pai? Yes, Ms. T, agree. But if I may, Siguro lang para dun sa mga fans ng Kapamilya and lalo na dun sa mga artistang very vocal during the issue, I understand baka lang meron silang feeling na na betray or something. Ewan ko lang po. I, speaking lang po, parang tinatry ko lang i-place doon kasi parang sanay na sila all their life na nandun yung mga Kapamilya stars nila na pinaglaban yung network. So siguro may konting-konting feeling lang na parang uh, wait lang. Di ba dapat loyal, certified kapamilya. But I understand their needs. Diba nga, lately, parang may mga lumalabas on your social media, I'm sure, and of course, hindi rin sa aman in the news, that uh, may mga naglalabas ng mga statements na kapamilya stars who have stayed on sa ABS. Yeah. Tapos sinasabi nila mm-hmm. na, uh, you know, yung, of course, loyalty. All yes. The, the mga statements and all that mm-hmm. na hindi sinasabi mo. Kasi, Parang yung nasa kapamilya, ang iniisip nila, network war mode pa rin sila. Ganun ba? Yes, Parang ganun. ganun po. Feeling ko lang po. But, um, yun po, I agree with Isa on that part na hindi naman po lahat talaga privileged enough na magkaroon pa rin ng work na nagtatransition ng ABS sa digital. So yeah, no to network war na sana daw. Oh, sana, i-hashtag natin yan. How about you, Nika Pai? Fresh na fresh in your wooden room. Um, I agree po. Actually, sobrang nakaka-excite na wala na network war. I remember when I was a kid, pag tinatanong ka, kapamilya ka ba or kapuso? Tapos kapag sinabi mo kung alin man doon, i-judge ka nila. So, ngayon, parang ang say. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yung sa loyalty naman po, tama nga po na hindi naman po lahat sila mabibigyan ng work kaagad. Like, I mean, buti na lang po may opportunities and open naman po yung GMA and TV5 as well as digital po to accept yung mga taga ABS-CBN. So, ayun. Sana wala nang network war. That's true, no? I, you know, um, syempre wala pa kasi tayo ng season 3 so hindi natin ang balita dito. But um, coming up, I believe, on October the 24th on TV5 is um, yung 
the mass singer no so this is where um uh, co host si Billy Crawford of course from ABS-CBN uh, Mateo Goodichelli and then um si Christine Reyes and Aga Mulak Aga Mulak of course has you know been in with TV5 for some time now nakakatuwa nga sabi niya sa uh, media launch sabi niya dito rin pala tayo magkikita-kita pero joke lang naman niya yon masaya nga raw siya kasi this might be the start of the end of uh, network wars but ako I really really appreciated what Billy said during the media launch no he just simply said that I you know I have to go where the work takes me diba kasi mga artista man sila they're also you know they also need to uh, earn a living diba sabi nga ni Billy lalong lalo na he's a new dad so he really has to go kung saan siya may trabaho hindi naman nun ibig sabihin hindi niya pinapasalamatan ng ABS for doing what uh, the network did for him but you know we just really all have to understand and I think ABS-CBN is okay with it sila nga yung nagsabi na if you can move you know if you want to move you go and move kasi hindi rin nila mabibigyan ng shows ang lahat ng tao but in terms of um in terms of the network war hindi ko lang alam kasi parang tayo naman pag nire-report din natin maybe it's something that we have to be conscious of as journalists of entertainment no when we say that lumipat na si Piolo we say na lumipat siya sa TV5 pero technically he's actually a freelance artist now no because the production company for the show is Bright Light Productions of course the um, former congressman Aldi Benitez will be interviewing him actually first nga eh, na medyo magaka mini mini interview siya uh, pupunta tayo dun and we'll find out more kung ano yung plans niya but uh, in my interview with him a brief one over Zoom sabi niya ang ang goal talaga naman talaga nila ay makatulong unang una sa artistang walang trabaho and number two para mawala na ang network war magkaroon na ng parang artists for all kung gusto niya mag-produce sa 2, why not? Kung gusto niya mag-produce sa 7, pwede rin. Wala na palang 2, sorry. A to Z network. If you have analog, of course, on a cable, uh, just just switch on to the Kappa Media channel to see the ABS-CBN program. So, diba, let's start the new season with ano, with a promising na idea na baka nga pagdating ng 2021, wala nang network war at sana wala nang COVID-19. And that's it for CSI Exchange with the Girls. We'll see you next week. Isa Pai, Tina Pai, and Nita Pai. We'll be right back. And that's it for this episode of the Manila Times CSI, Celebrity Style Inspiration. Thank you very much to Christina, Isa, Nika, and Neil for getting Episode 1, Season 3 back online. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on our social media accounts, including our official Twitter account, at TMTCSI. See you next Thursday, CSIers. Salamat and bye! CSIers, don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more episodes of the Manila Times CSI. See you!